What's up everyone? Welcome back to Debra X Garage. So, I'm making this video because we uh, have not been able to upload uh, for about a week now. Um, just been crazy busy with a bunch of stuff. Um, but as you guys know, my first track day ever, which is a double header, it's back to back, uh, Friday and Saturday, it's coming up this coming Friday. So the countdown is coming to a close. I am so excited to get this car on the track um, to learn a ton. Um, to give you guys some context, uh, what I'm gonna be doing is um, the SCCA, uh, their time trial circuit um, series. Um, they have a HPD driver school, um, so high performance driving. Um, it's essentially a intro icebreaker for newer drivers on the track. Um, so that's what's going to be taking place this Friday. Um, what's cool is I'll be able to get my competition license for the SCCA um, through this program. Um, it's gonna be a great introduction for me to get on track without that really competitive setting. Uh, it's going to be a really good eye opener for me, get a lot of good experience and seat time before I go out and really start pushing the car. So the next day is actual uh, time trials and open lapping. So I'm gonna be doing that the following day on Saturday. So if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you'll know that getting track content onto this channel has been really, really high on the priority list and something that we've been working towards for quite some time. So that being said, um, there are one or two tiny little things I wanna get finished up before Friday on the car. Um, there's one thing I'm waiting in the mail. I'm not sure if it'll make it uh, for this time around, uh, but maybe for the next track day. So you guys will hear about that quite uh, pretty soon here. So that being said, today's video is really just going over the entire car. I'm um, going corner to corner, bumper to bumper, showing you guys exactly um, what I've done on the car. Uh, we get tons of questions all the time asking, you know, what's this part? Where did you get this part? Uh, who makes this one? So um, I wanted to just take a little bit of time, uh, slow it down before our big track day and just go over every single part on the car. So. Um, I'm gonna turn the camera around here. Let's start right at the front. I'm sure, <laughs> before I do that, I'm sure uh, everyone on the channel already knows, but um, let me, before I do that, go over some of the basics, right? So this is a 2016 Subaru WRX Premium. It does have the moonroof. Um, I have right under 73,000 miles on the car um, right now. Um, so the car has been very healthy. I've owned it for almost three years now. Um, and when I bought it, I bought it used um, for around 30K uh, with, a, with around 30K thousand miles on it. It wasn't, it didn't cost 30K, but um, there were quite a few issues with the car when I first bought it. Um, the last owner uh, really didn't know what they were doing. And uh, I found rat's nests of bundled wires for the headlights uh, that were absolutely terrible. Um, I found missing bolts. I found bolts that should be tight that weren't. Um, so working on this car, picking it apart, doing every single mod I've done so far has really been uh, a little eye-opening. Every time I did something, I found something that the previous owner did incorrectly. So a bit of a learning curve I had to adjust to, but um, that's that's the stats on the car. So let's dive into what I've done to it. So here's the front of the car. Um, obviously the biggest thing you guys are gonna notice is the front mount intercooler, but I'm gonna be talking about when I open the engine bay and talk, talking about some of the power mods uh, a little bit later. Um, front is pretty simple. Um, I've done a few things. Uh, the most important things are the lighting. Um, so these headlights came uh, from the previous owner already blacked out. Um, they did a pretty good job with that. Uh, I don't like the choice that they did for the sea lights. Personally, I prefer the diodynamics, but these are the uh, Morimoto, I believe, um, sea lights. Um, their color output is a little more blue than I like and what matches the rest of the car, but oh well, I think they did okay job. Um, they do look really nice. Um, as for the headlights themselves, 
Um, these are the stock projectors and the stock headlights overall, but I did replace the two bulbs. These are the Katana LEDs. Um, they've served me really well. They've lasted two and a half, almost three years so far and haven't had any issues. Uh, I might upgrade those a little soon, but for their purpose, they've done amazing job for just, you know, an Amazon brand, you know, uh, headlight. Well, not Amazon brand, but they're off Amazon, so they were much cheaper. Um, these are, um, so the, I did the low beam and the high beam. Previously, I had done the low beam with the stock projectors for the fog lights. So down here, we have the Diodynamic SS3 pods, uh, which have also been absolutely amazing. I love their light output. Um, these are the fog sport models, which means that they're, um, they have a really strong cutoff in the middle of the beam. So you're not blinding oncoming traffic. Um, and it spreads a really wide light pattern, which is uh, something that I absolutely love, uh, especially doing some back road and Canyon driving. Um, for the, uh, turn signals here. These are the smoked turn signals, LEDs, uh, full LED replacements. Um, the entire panel blinks, which is really good for indicating which direction I'm going. It's it's kind of, it's part of safety feature, part of, you know, visual cosmetic feature. Um, I don't remember the brand, but I got it off Rally Sport Direct. Um, I believe they're the OLM turn signal. So I'll put that, uh, which model name up in the description here. Uh, these are the stock fog bezels, grim speed offset license plate because they look amazing. Carbon fiber front and rear badges. Uh, again, I'll put that, the exact name of these in the, uh, in, on the screen here, but these look amazing. Onto the hood, carbon fiber overlay. Just thought it looks nice, adds a little bit of accent to the top of the, the hood there. Um, I will be doing a much more with the hood. Maybe a full carbon fiber replacement coming up here soon, but um, you guys will see videos on what I'm doing with the hood very soon here. Similarly, I did the lower overlay just because I thought it looked nice. Um, I get a lot of questions in person, sorry. It's, Car's filthy, there's been a lot of bugs, but um, about this <laughs> custom front lip here. Uh, it is not custom. This was a eBay special uh, ABS front lip. It served me well. It lasted way longer than I thought. It, would be, it was 80 bucks, super cheap, um, but it got eviscerated by a <laughs> a pile of snow that built up, built up uh, on the edge of our road um, this last winter. So this custom front lip, as you notice, uh, it actually split perfectly evenly on this side and this side. Uh, kind of looks like those fender uh, front lip protectors that the um, Mopar guys run. But uh, there used to be a piece that goes all the way along the bottom here. Um, you guys will see what we're going to be doing for front lips. Uh, and the entire lip kit around the car very soon. Um, I do have a purchase that I'm gonna be placing pretty soon here and we're gonna be replacing this with something that looks much better and is a little more functional as well. Still talking about cosmetics on the car. Uh, these are the OLM carbon fiber mirror caps. Um, these are real carbon fiber. I do love these a lot. They look really good. Um, onto the roof, I did a carbon fiber wrap for the roof. Um, it really wasn't that hard. You do need two people to help spread and uh, stretch the vinyl and place it. But once it's placed, it's really a one person job. But this has actually held up. Sorry, it's a little dusty. But uh, it's held up really, really well and still looks amazing. Um, Moonroof, sunroof, whatever Subaru calls it. The windows are tinted. They are at 40% um, tint, and that is state legal in both of the states I've lived in, which is awesome. They look great. Um, they've held up really well. Carbon fiber overlays on the side here, there, and there. Um, I did these as you know every Deborah X owner does when they first buy the car. What are the cheap, easy mods that we can do to make the car look a little bit more aggressive? And I still think I kind of like that. Replacement badges, black. We're gonna talk about the wheels, tires, suspension, brakes, all of that later, um, but while I'm here, these are the Rally Armor 
mud flaps. Been doing, I did those really early on. I think they really complete the look on the car and with um, a wider wheel and tire setup, they really help protect your door and protect your paint from rocks flying up and hitting. Uh, your own car. Uh, and it also is pretty courteous for not flinging stuff up into drivers behind you. Let's go to the rear of the car. This is the uh, just the Vortex generator from Subaru. It is the OEM part. Um, this was on the car when I previously bought it from the previous owner, but uh, I had to take it off and then place it back on top of the carbon fiber vinyl. So these are the frameless carbon fiber badges. This is the the Rec Speed carbon fiber duck bill spoiler. Um, it's held up really well. I've like I really like the look of it, and it's one of the one of my favorite mods to be honest. Tail lights. These are the stock tail lights. I did replace all of the LEDs in here, uh, or all the bulbs in here with LEDs. Um, really, really bright uh, turn signal. Um, these red overlays came on the car. And at first I did not like them at all, but I think they really complete the rear, the red, all the all red, um, I think actually looks really good. This is the, I forget which model it is, but is the rear tail light, third brake light. Um, it does have um, a flashing or non-flashing feature, so I can turn it on and off, which is great. Um, this light turns red when the uh, car is in um, running mode. So that acts as a running light, which is nice. And then the middle will flash um, when I'm on the brakes. And then the outside ring actually gets a little brighter when you're on the brakes too. So let's talk about wheels, tires, and brakes. Um, I'll talk about suspension a little bit later, um, but wheels, tires, and brakes, and lug nuts. These are the, start there. I actually just answered a question about these in uh, on Instagram or on YouTube, I can't remember which. But uh, these are the Gorilla Spline Drive small acorn lug nuts. Um, I think they're the same as like the tuner style lug nuts, whatever. Um, I like the splines because you can just zip all five of them off. And I don't think it's easy for anyone to get a socket around these to get them off. So they are much more secure than just the standard uh, super lug nuts. I also think they look pretty good. Form over function or function over form, uh, but um, they look great. The wheel and tire setup. These are the NK TS10s, uh, 18 by nine and a half plus 35 offset. Uh, usually in, for Subarus you see plus 38, plus 35 is starting to get a little more common because people like that, um, that stance, a uh, little bit of poke and uh, they don't look like they're poking now and that's because I have rolled my fenders on all four sides and it was a pretty aggressive roll. So these look, really really good they're probably one of my favorite things i've ever done to the car um, i bought these very soon after getting the car and they have really stood the test of time the paint on them has been great um, i love them i really really love them uh, for the tires these are the extreme contact sports from continental uh, 265 35 um, if you guys want more information about how to choose your wheel tire setup um, we do have a bunch of videos that I will link in the corner of the screen here um, about that, but that's what I have to set up. These are very comfortable. They're not noisy on the road and they feel amazing and perform amazing on the road, especially in the rain. Actually in the rain, these are actually one of the highest rated tires. So um, I like these because they are um, a bit more, they have a bit better tread wear than the Michelins, um, but I think their, their price point for the uh, overall performance is very, very good as well. You guys are gonna see these Brembos. Um, I did a full Brembo swap on this car. Um, these are off of a 2012 STI. The 09 to 17 Brembos, four pot fronts, two pot rears are direct bolt on for the 15 plus WRX. Um, you do not have to buy any adapter plates. The only thing you have to do is change the size of your rotors to the STI size. And for these rotors, you'll see I do have the slotted swept rotors from Faction Fab. Uh, in the back there, I do have the Faction Fab braided stainless steel lines for the brakes. Um, and then for brake pads, we have the Faction Fab F Spec brake pads, which honestly have been amazing. Um, they have a really, really good bite. Uh, they're not too noisy. They do squeak a little bit here and there, but I think that's mostly just from dust buildup in the uh, the big brake kit here. Um, 
I do need to do a better job of cleaning that up and uh, maybe I'll take them out and relude the shims, but um, not super noisy squeaks here and there. Awesome performance. The dust output is not crazy. Um, it's actually less than stock in my opinion. So um, I really, really like this entire setup and it is going to perform amazingly on track and I will not have as much brake fade as uh, the standard calipers for this car. Not sure if any of you guys will even care, but uh, wiper blades. Um, I use the Bosch Icon series. Um, I've used these on the car ever since uh, Project Farm, I think that's the guy's name, his channel, I love his channel, he tests and torture tests a bunch of different products. And he's done a windshield a wiper episode and uh, Bosch Icon came out on top, even above the Rain X. So I use these, I love them. They are pretty affordable and much better than OEM. So yeah. So moving on to the interior, uh, this is the carbon fiber and suede um, faction fab steering wheel. It is amazing. Um, I've talked about this video or I talked about this product in this specific video, but um, the effect that a steering wheel can have and just the, the, the aspects of the car that you end up touching um, every single time you drive, improving the quality of those really just improves your overall feel in the car, which I really love. And it just feels amazing. Um, I love the stripe, love how it feels in my hand. Um, the micro suede is just amazing. So um, also in the interior, we have the, this is the eye doing head unit. Um, it has served me really well. Um, the audio quality improvement was really, really good. And while we're on the topic of audio, um, I just have um, kicker brand full range four door speakers. So the, the each of the four doors, I did the full range speakers, did not do the tweeters, no sub, and I'm still getting some really good bass output though. I might replace those soon. I do have an Alpine inline um, amplifier. Uh, super simple to install. Uh, it runs in line between the back of the head unit to the door speakers and just amplifies the, the sound a little bit. Um, gives it a little bit more punch on that full range, which is awesome. Shifter. Uh, this is the Slammer model shifter um, from Racing. Um, it is the ten textured wrinkle black shift knob and it is super heavy um, to improve shift feel on these cars using a weighted shift knob is at the top of the list of what you guys should do it feels amazing it helps the, the car go into gear I do not have a short shift kit on this because I think on these cars it makes the shift feel worse um, if you just think about simple physics if you have more weight on a longer lever it's less in input needed to move and go into gear. Uh, when you shorten this and you bring it closer and to do a short shift kit, you have to use more muscle and more input to do the same amount of work. That's just simple physics. So I like the, the way this feels. I do have the, uh, the shifter bushing underneath um, installed. I hurt my pinky really bad. I think I actually broke it when I installed that because I slammed my hand into the frame, getting a bolt loose. Um, and then we also have the shift stop underneath here that really improves the shift feel. So it is like butter. It really feels good. And again, not the short shift kit. Just feels really good. I love it. Always park your car in gear, guys. Um, other parts of the interior. A lot of people are going to ask what uh, Cobb mount this is. Um, I'm using a, it is a skosh mount. Let's see if I can get the light on here. Um, let me move the access port. Oops. There we go. So I have a skosh mount that is uh, 3M taped onto the inside of the cluster trim. Yeah. Um, right here. Um, it does block your view for your coolant temp a tiny bit, which is this gauge down here, um, but I, I'm running the coolant temp on my access port anyways. So driving position, it doesn't really block anything. It's not in the way and it is right in line of my view of when I'm looking at my uh, cluster gauge, which I really like. Some people do the dash mount up here. I don't really like that because I think it blocks your field of view a little bit and takes your eye off the road too much. So doing that. 
A lot of people ask what this, what this switch is. This is the on off switch I have for my inline amp because a long time ago I was having electrical issues and I thought I was getting a power draw from the uh, inline amp. So I just did a hard cut off power switch from the power switch on, power source on and off. Um, I don't know if that was the actual issue, but uh, it haven't I haven't had any issues since. So um, it could have been the battery itself. I don't know, but I have that. This is my rubber ducky. Um, for those of you guys who I know personally, you'll know the story behind this, which is amazing. But uh, for those of you guys on YouTube, unfortunately, I cannot tell you that story, but it is my driving totem. I keep this little guy in my car and a key keeps me safe. WeatherTech floor mats. Um, I did want to show you guys this as well. Um, in a previous video, I do have a seat mounted fire extinguisher. Um, I do have a just a rag on the hand charging handle here to keep everything from not rattling, but it is a quick release, which means I can pop this tab and just grab this. Um, front, even when I'm buckled in from the driver's seat, I can still reach over and grab this. Um, and it does not get in the way of this seat sliding forward or backwards. So I um, always want to be, uh, be really cautious. Um, I like to be prepared for any kind of event. So I always have things in my trunk for, uh, I have a tire inflator, I have a tire gauge, I have um, emergency blanket, I have road flares, I have uh, a small uh, you know, maintenance kit, a little auto, uh, automotive tool kit um, that I keep in the back of my car. And then I have this. Um, this is for if in case my car ever has an issue where I do have to use a fire extinguisher, but it's also for other people. If you're ever on the road and you see a car go up in flames, I wanna be able to stop and help them. So that's why I have this. Um, this fire extinguisher is rated to be stored in temperatures anywhere between negative 30 Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So. Um, it is completely safe to keep in your car year round, um, unless you guys live in Death Valley or something where the internal temperature in your car gets over 140. Uh, I would, I mean, things are gonna start melting at that point. So um, I wouldn't be too concerned. Let's talk about suspension. Um, unfortunately, the key component in your suspension, which is your coilovers, um, I have a new set of coilovers installed on this car. You probably, you guys probably saw our teaser on Instagram for that. Um, and I can't really tell you what those are quite yet. And you will find out very, very soon in a couple weeks here. Um, but I will tell you that they are a track specific suspension and it is absolutely amazing, these coilovers. Um, I'll, of course, talk to you guys much more and there'll be an in-depth video on what those are. Uh, but for now, I can tell you about the rest of the suspension setup. So for the rest of the suspension setup, we have white line everything pretty much. White line front and rear sway bars, front, uh, front and rear end links. Uh, we also have the white line roll center kit, uh, which is really important for lowered cars to maintain that downwards angle of your lower control arm. Uh, and in the rear, I do have Faction Fab, I'm sorry, I do have white line um, rear control arms to help dial in the camber on the rear. While I talk about that, might as well talk about what my alignment specs are. Um, right now I have um, negative 2.75 degrees of camber in the front and right around negative two degrees of camber in the rear. Um, again, both fenders are front and rear on all four sides are rolled. Um, Wow, my paint looks really, really good, even though the car is dirty. Um, if you guys are in the Northeast and want a ceramic coating done, Jags Performance, um, they did this for me. They did the full correction and then the coating, and it was an absolutely amazing experience. Um, I will put the link to that video, the paint correction video, in the description. Um, but yeah, the roll center kit really, really improves, in my opinion the feeling on this car, uh, the performance of your handling and making sure your suspension geometry is the way it is, or it is the way it should be. So here we are in the engine bay. Um, you'll notice I have my top hats covered with uh, two rags because I can't show you guys what that is yet, but I'm gonna go over everything else I have done in here. Um, where do I even start? 
Um, I know you guys are gonna want me to talk about power mods, but I'm gonna talk about all of the supporting mods I have in the engine bay first. Starting with the battery, we get this question a lot. Um, I run the Optima Red Top. I have had electrical issues in the past, and as soon as I installed this, I have not had a single failure to start. I haven't had any charging issues. This battery is absolutely amazing, and it is absolutely worth the price. A lot of people ask about the difference between the red top and the yellow top. Red top has better cold cranking amps. Yellow top is better for uh, people with large uh, systems in their car, like a winch or a sub or amplifier or things like that, where they need more uh, excess electrical storage, electricity storage and power to run those uh, accessories um, without the car on. So if you guys don't have any of those big systems, get the red top. Top of the engine bay, we have the Perrin um, strut bar brace, um, tower brace strut. I always forget how to what it's called, but um, amazing. Adds performance and handling. Make sure that any extra weight is transferred evenly across the two front um, suspension pieces so that when you're taking hard corners, the car stays flatter. It's gonna be hard to see, but this is the Perrin Master Cylinder Brace. Um, it really helps with improving your pedal feel, a stiffer pedal, it keeps everything from moving around. Um, and I did upgrade my clutch line when I did this as well. I'm sorry, I didn't upgrade it then, but I upgraded it when I did the pitch stop brace, which you can see one piece on the left here, one piece on the right. Um, these two things combined really help with the drivetrain feel. And of course I have the Faction Fab uh, pitch stop itself, which has been amazing. Um, it does add a little bit of NVH, but the pitch stop brace helps reduce the NVH in, in the cabin. So overall, I love these mods. It really improves how the the car handles, improves how it shifts and how it feels overall. I am running the Motul 660 um, brake fluid, which I believe is dot four. Um, and that has also improved brake pedal feel, clutch feel, because they use, both of those use the brake fluid, so. On to our AOS. This is the Crawford V3 AOS. It does not use any coolant lines and it retains your stock PCV system. It's just an add-on to it. So for those of you guys worried about warranty or anything like that, this does not void your warranty. And if anyone says it does, they do not understand how that works. So um, this has performed very, very well, has absolutely reduced the amount of oil consumption, reduced the amount of oil going into my intake track, and it has also keep the tops of my valves clean on these on this, uh, this DIT engine. Other supporting mods, um, you'll see the cap here, but I did a upgraded coil rad hypercore radiator helps keep all my temps down. Uh, it's really gonna be important on track. You're not gonna see much difference using this, just driving on the street unless you're in a very, very hot climate. Um, but I can't wait for this to really help me on track. With that, I did the Grimspeed radiator, Grimspeed radiator hoses. Um, they're great, they're gonna stand the test of time and really um, make sure that everything stays, all the fluid and coolant stays where it should be. Um, I really don't like those stock worm clamps. I like, I don't, I don't even know what they're called. They're like the snap ring clamps. Um, having these worm clamps that I can tighten down and make sure I can check them really make, gives me that peace of mind. Cosmetics in the engine. Um, you'll see I have the Grim Speed kit, uh, front radiator shroud, pulley cover and the fender shrouds in the sides here. Um, they've been great, um, super easy to install and it just makes the engine look so much better. Also on aesthetics, these are the Renegade, this is the set of caps from Renegade Motorsports. It comes with the oil cap, washer fluid cap, reservoir cap, the brake fluid cap back there. And then it also comes with your high performance dipstick which adds 100 horsepower. Um, that is not an exaggeration. This thing actually adds, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, it looks really great and I actually like how the bottom of it reads. It's a lot easier to read than the stock one. So I really like that as well. So now on to the stuff that a lot of you guys want to hear about and that is all of my power mods. Um, first, first off the bat here, easiest to see, Grim Speed 
intake. Love it. It sounds really good, performs well. A lot of tuners really prefer it over some of the other brands because the position of the filter is locked into one specific place, so it can't move uh, horizontally into and onto that an intake tube. Um, there's one spot it can latch onto, which makes the uh, readings for the, uh, the MAF really, really consistent, which I think is awesome. Down below this little hood scoop thing here, is a lot of different parts. Still running the stock BPV, but I do have the Grim Speed um, Turbo Inlet, the aluminum cast one. Um, that's what hooks up to the intake. I still have a stock turbo, stock headers, um, stock block, but this car really doesn't need much more than that for what I want to do with it. Uh, maybe we'll upgrade in the future. I'd love to drop a forged block in here to make some crazy power, but I think that's a little bit further down the line in the future. Also up here in the engine bay, you'll see I have the Grim Speed front mount intercooler kit. Um, very easy to install. Obviously it's a long in-depth process, but I still think it sounds amazing. It helps perform to help keeps your intake temps low and come on. You can't beat that. That looks so good. Um, on that topic, I did cut my bumper. Um, it looks really, really clean in my opinion. Um, it doesn't look too far off from OEM, but it does open up this gap that used to be right here um, that used to have that bumper piece covering that. So I did open that up and remove that front grill. Other parts that you can't really see um, easily might be able to see it a little bit. Let's see, right there. Um, you're gonna see some heat wrap right here, which is the Grim Speed Catted J pipe. Um, this is the V1. I might upgrade to the V2, but for now, um, it's been working beautifully. Um, I do also have the Perrin um, support brackets on the turbo where that mounts up because it helps keep everything in one place. Um, it does have a little bit of a slot to, uh, for those of you who are, are having issues with getting your aftermarket J pipe to line up. And then we also have down there, which you can't see, the Faction Fab turbo. Uh, turbo blanket, which has really, really helped with, uh, it's going to help with improving um, under hood temperatures. It's gonna help with keeping all of the heat in the turbo, making sure it spools up really well and not affecting and overheating components around it, like the cold side of the turbo, but also the block and everything else. I do also have the flex fuel kit. I did wrap that sensor in gold foil to help protect it from heat. Um, I do have the upgraded version. Some of the older versions were having issues with overheating and failing. Um, I've been running it for more than a year now in 110 degree heat some days and it has been uh, absolutely awesome. Um, I am able to run up to E65 blend. Um, I do not have a low pressure fuel pump. I did not upgrade my fuel lines. The only thing you have to do is a drop in fuel pump in the gas tank itself, which is the low pressure fuel pump. Um, I have the Dishworks 65C. Um, it's what my tuner recommended and it has worked beautifully. It's not too noisy. Haven't had a single issue with it. Back outside to the rear of the car, um, I talked to you guys about the J-Pipe. Um, for the catback, this is the NVIDIA Q300. It really does a great job making a really low tone, good rumble sound. It's not an equal length header, so it doesn't have that traditional Subi rumble, but I still think this system entirely, everything sounds amazing. Uh, it's not too loud. Um, I did have the R400 before paired with the J-Pipe and it sounded amazing, but it was a bit too aggressive for my taste. So I did switch out for a little more uh, stealth option with these big single pass through mufflers you can see here. So um, if you guys are looking for an option that is not really going to be crazy, crazy expensive, but also going to sound amazing and not be too, too loud, I think the Q300 is one of the best options. Um, I also like how they fill the bezel back here. Um, these are the four inch tips with double wall uh, tips and I think they look amazing. I need to clean these, but sounds amazing, looks amazing. I love this setup. The last bit of information that I know some of you are gonna wanna know, for those of you who watch the channel, you already know what these are, but um, power figures. This car makes 405 wheel horsepower, 385 torque. 
um, with on, on ethanol with the front mount intercooler. Uh, and those numbers are normalized for sea level. Um, up here in Colorado, uh, where the air is thinner, we don't have as much oxygen, it does not make as much power, but it's still in the high 300s. Uh, my best guess um, would be maybe a 15 to 20 horsepower loss um, overall, just because of less oxygen. But because it is turbocharged, you do not see as much of an effect on the car at altitude. Um, I did get the car tuned here uh, at altitude um, and the car has been running absolutely beautifully. Haven't had a single issue since that uh, I got that tune. So another question I know you guys are gonna ask, um, oil changes, fluids, what am I running? Coolant, Subaru OEM coolant, the 50-50 blue mix um, with water wetter added. It is compatible with 50-50 blends. Um, so that is what I'm running for that. Oil and oil filter. This is the stock oil filter. Anybody that says you shouldn't run the stock oil filter is, <laughs> they just don't know what they're talking about. Um, stock WRX oil filter. Uh, for the oil itself, I am running Motul X Clean, um, X Clean Plus 5W30. I will be switching that out for the 300V 5W40 before the track, but I'm waiting for the last item to fill that gap up there, which is a top mount oil cooler. So when I do the top mount oil cooler, I'll switch over to 5W40, 5W40, sorry, not 5W8, W is the winter rating. Uh, especially in hotter climates, you can run, you run 5W40. I would not recommend running it if you have really cold winters. So I'm probably gonna switch between the two, between the seasons, track season, and then the colder winter season, so. For my differential fluid and trans fluid, uh, I am running Motul 75W90 um, gear oil. It's been great, I haven't had any issues with it. It keeps the transmission strong, uh, keeps it running and healthy. So, uh, last thing I have to tell you guys is a little bit of news. I am going to be moving in the next month. Um, that's why you kind of see a bunch of storage boxes and suitcases and stuff over here. But um, I'm going to be getting my own garage at my new place, which is a oversized one car garage. So I'm gonna have plenty of space to work on this car, build out a garage that I really like, um, do a bunch of tool storage stuff. I might be doing uh, a new coating for the floor. Um, you guys will hear more about that very soon. Uh, well, about a month away, a little bit, a little bit over a month, but uh, that's kind of why that's going on. But I love the way this car feels. I love how it performs. I love how it handles. Um, the amount of power output is just amazing. And I cannot wait to see what this thing can do on the track. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, for those of you guys who have supported the channel for so long, you know that we've been pushing for these track days for quite some time. And I just, I can't wait to share that journey with you guys. Um, it's really going to be eye-opening for me to see what I can do personally. Um, I have a lot to learn, but um, nevertheless, I'm ready to take on the challenge. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next week with our first track video. Peace out. See you guys next week.